here I am in Taiwan. I didn't plan on making this video, but I thought it could be fun to do because a few things happened over the past few days that kind of inspired me to make this uh, video. As always, it's unscripted, so hopefully I don't make too many mistakes in what I say and what I intend to say. And if you like what I do, maybe you can like and subscribe, subscribe. And it's kind of related to the book that I released this past summer on how to visualize the fingerboard as a jazz musician so that you can develop certain skills that allow you to, I guess, learn organically. So you can find the link. Uh, I'll pin it in the comment if you want to check out the book in detail. But I'm still going to gloss over the, the topic and what I'm going to say here today. So what happened recently is I met a number of people very talented people, young people, who practice a lot of things. And then, all that stuff is great. You should practice those things. It's great to practice those things. But sometimes I think the priority may be a little bit upside down. And what especially inspired me to make this video today is I saw a meme, a Joe Pass meme the other day. And it's a quote where he says pretty much the same thing. It's great that all these young kids are practicing these scales, these arpeggios, so what not. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is to be learning tunes. And I want to explain what that means, what he means by that. Well, I'm not Joe Pass, but I think I understand what he means. And I talk about this a lot in some of my previous videos from the previous weeks, so you should watch those as well. So if you do that, please like, please subscribe. There is something that happens when you learn a lot of songs and specific kinds of songs depending on your level watch my video from a few weeks ago where i'm talking about like um, how to practice it's a philosophical video and so is this one but basically if you're a beginner you're an intermediate player or an advanced player or anything in between the way you think the way you practice will change according to what you want to work on and what i want to show you today is something that you can practice across all levels and namely learning songs but how to learn songs and one thing that you can do on on the guitar i did mention early on uh, not really but in, in a previous video that even if you're kind of new to jazz you can actually learn difficult songs if you in the beginning try not to improvise just learn the chords learn the melody and if you can just do some comping you can be learning difficult songs, quote-unquote difficult songs from the get-go. But uh, by difficult songs, I'm not talking about giant steps necessarily, but songs that are, not, that are very common, such as Stella by Starlight. Um, Green Dolphin Street. You know, those are songs that are not always the most accessible for beginners but you can be learning the chords and you can be learning the melody and just doing that will do something um, there's also this other video that I saw very recently again it was a meme on Instagram or something it's someone I think Joe Pass giving a workshop and someone asked him a theoretical question it's like uh, what do you think over a 251 and Joe Pass I don't know I, I, I believe him maybe he's being serious he's asking what's a 251 is it this? Oh, okay. So you see, in his mind, he's not complicating things. He has one of these shapes. Before he even thinks of a 251, he already feels and hears this. And it's actually the same for me. Um, I actually know a lot of theory, but when I'm playing, I'm reacting more than I'm thinking about such things. Sometimes it takes me a second to explain what it is that I did, what scale it was, or what chord tone it was. I just have this feeling inside me. And I want to teach you how to do that. And it's not as complicated as you think it might be. One of the biggest secrets is really just learning a bunch of songs. After a while, and if you work on a collection of songs that are more or less similar, usually from the 30s, 40s, 50s, what people call the American, Great American Songbook, but there's some songs that don't come from America as well, like Autumn Leaves, 
or Beyond the Sea or whatever. Anyway, all those songs are written in the same era in kind of a similar style. After learning a number of them by heart, something is going to happen. You're going to, your ears and also on the guitar, you're going to recognize patterns and you're going to recognize them organically and kind of by pure instinct because you've played them so many times and they're so familiar. You kind of realize at the end that every single song is practically the same. Quote, unquote. For instance, the B section of Honeysuckle Rose is the B section of Coquette. It's the B section of uh, It Don't Mean a Thing with slight modifications. You have songs like uh, Darn That Dream. This chord right, G to E flat. You find that in Out of Nowhere. You find that in Just Friends. Right there. Um, just that beginning, beginning with Just Friends. After you, that's after you've gone. That's I'll see you in my dreams. That's uh, what's this song? I think it's called I Can't Believe That You're In Love With Me. It's uh, Moon Glow, etc., etc. By learning all these standards and really exploring all the different harmonies, I guarantee you, it's gonna transform the way you you think, the way you hear. It's gonna be very very organic. So this is what I suggest you do. Um, I'm not going to be talking from the perspective of an advanced player because if you're an advanced player, probably you don't need to be watching this. <laughs> but if you're a beginner or intermediate player, you get everything according to your level. Uh, if your ears are not good enough, obviously start with, uh, with a chart of a song. I wouldn't recommend necessarily the iReal Pro because it doesn't have the melody. So you can, got, you can buy yourself a fake book. But keeping in mind that what you see on the sheet music is one possible interpretation out of many, many. But start that way and get yourself a teacher, uh, hopefully a really good teacher or multiple teachers or ask multiple different experienced jazz musicians, pianists or guitarists about their thoughts on harmony so you can hear different perspectives. Because as I've said in previous videos, harmony, jazz harmony is about, mm, is per it can be personal. It's about interpreting the harmony so that you come up with your own style and your own pathways. So watch my video from a few weeks ago where I talked about harmonic direction. Watch all my videos. They're great. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. Oh yeah. Okay. So start that way. So like for example, if you want to learn uh, all the things you are, start with an easy song. You know, just look at the, the sheet music and use the chords that you know, that you were taught. You know, simple like this. <laughs> comping first of course memorize it and of course as you get better you can explore other voicings and comping patterns comping styles it doesn't always have to be these huge chords it doesn't have to be complicated when I mean different ways it doesn't mean it has to be compli complicated chords it can be something like this It doesn't have to be C major 7. On the sheet music nowadays when you buy a fake book, it always says major 7, minor 7. But you can play triad. You can play 6. Uh, how? It doesn't always have to be the, the exact specified voicing written on the sheet music. So you can explore with simple, simpler chord voicings that are not as big. Things like that. But again, if this is like foreign to you, work with a teacher, of course. So learn the chords. Then learn the melody, a simple version of the melody. Make sure to re listen to recordings. Sorry. Okay, that, that was an ornament. I shouldn't have done that. And then the fun part, you combine the two. You put the melody on top. Or 
fragments of chords. Instead of doing like something big like this, you can just do. Red voicings. By learning a whole bunch of songs this way, it's really going to do something. Um, namely, without even being at the theoretical level, your ears will become accustomed to how the melody notes are relating to the harmony. So, for example, well here it's very obvious. It's all chord tones. But if you take a song like Stella by Starlight, you have this, and the sheet music, most sheet music will say E minor 7 flat 5 as the first chord. Originally it was like this, B flat diminished with a note A on top. It's an extension. Anyway, um, okay, so it says, let's just, Stick to the version that's, that it says on the, the sheet music. E minor 7 flat 5. You're going to have to find a way to play something like this, but put the A on top. Well, we can sacrifice the third. It's not a big deal. Do it here. You're going to be discovering new voicings. Or if you're into West Montgomery and you heard him play this chord, it's pretty cool too. So basically, by learning melodies and seeing how they relate to the chords by making these chord melodies, it does something. You start to recognize the feeling of a, how a particular note, a chord tone, may react against the chord. So this sound. Where else do you hear this? Night and day. If you harmonize it this way, which is the way Django harmonizes it, but the original is B flat. But it has a different feeling. Just listen. Like this. It's a very organic way of learning. And of course, you can also practice the melody without chords, but tell yourself in the back of your head where rhythmically does the melody fit. When the, when the chord changes, which note does it change on? For example, um, Autumn Leaves. This, this, the starting melody is like this. That's the first phrase. But where does the chord change? It's here. Things like that. Tell yourself such things. And it's as simple as that. That's the practice routine. Do this with as many songs as possible. Now me, I'm a little bit more experienced, a little bit more advanced. The way I do this, I tend not to use sheet music. I just listen to different recordings. Or another thing I also do is um, often I go to jam sessions, I play with musicians who call these songs and I may know the chords, but I don't know the melody. But they've played, the, the, I let other people play the melody and they've played it so many times that eventually it's just in my ear. Or I listen to recording so many times, it's just in my ear. And I don't even, it's kind of, I call this delayed transcribing. So basically, like transcribing, well, transcribing not in the old days means writing it down, but young people, when they say transcribing, just means lifting. But now, instead of like listening to a recording with your guitar in your hand and just lifting the melody, you can do, what you can do is listen to the recording or different recordings so many, so many times that you hear the melody in your ear, in your inner ear. Then one day you take your instrument, see if you can figure it out. And that's what I was doing the other day while I was at my friend's house. He was playing the new Spider-Man 2 game. He finished that game in like two, three days. While he was playing, I was on his guitar and I was just doing this exercise, going through a whole bunch of songs that I hadn't played in a while or well, that I had never played as far as the melody is concerned, but that I had in my ears. So one such song was East of the Sun, which I almost never play the melody. I know the chords. And I just sat there watching him play Spider-Man and just... I know this chord, I can do this one. 
<laughs> then goes to F sharp minor 7 flat 5, B7, E minor, A7. Then after uh, A minor, D7, 4, 4. It all fits the melody. Second half. What I do here. Then you have this thing. Let's see, D7, so. F sharp minus half left. D7, D minor. A7, A minor, C minor, B minor, B flat minor, and then A minor, D7, isn't this so much fun and you can be playing the melody almost everywhere and try to find different positions and all that. It's endless, and you're going to discover so many different pathways. You can do this with I'll be seeing you. Sunny side of the street. You can also try to play an octave below. Tiny fragments, chord fragments, and you play with a with a band like a trio, drums, bass, and guitar. No piano or rhythm guitar, or even if there is, doesn't matter. You can be making these little mini uh, chord solo style melodies. <laughs> Try to find out what all the popular standards are. Go to uh, for, for that. I recommend that you go to jam sessions. Hopefully, there's a jam session where you live, um, and see which songs get called around. I've been to jam sessions all over the world. Um, basically, there's a, there's a, there's a core repertoire. You know, on green dolphins, G, autumn leaves, uh, all the things you are. Fly me to the moon. Um, Oh, and notes this one. Da -dee, da -da -da -da. Days of Wine and Roses. Mm -hmm. 
different harmonizations. More, the, the chart says uh, E flat 7, the second chord, but I think the original is more like E flat major 6 or E flat major 7. The day of roses. And the, the orchestration has to be a little cool thing. So listen to recordings. Explore these little details so you can expand your chord knowledge. Doing this does many things. It makes you so much more familiar with the fingerboard. It develops your ears, your instincts, um, and you can discover a lot of new chord voices because you're forced to come up with, play a melody and put a chord below it. Just like uh, when I did that, Stella, this chord, this. This is something you can practice for the rest of your life and it's endless because you're always going to find new pathways and your brain will think faster and faster and faster and it's just going to be an instinct something that you feel here and here rather than think oh that is the major nine or the, the dominant, dominant whatever i don't even know it, it's 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 really wonderful feeling if you can train yourself to have this ability and it can start today and it's not complicated like i said at the most basic level start with a chart and with the teacher as well maybe and then do something simple and you can also go on YouTube and watch how others are playing the same songs look at the chord voicings steal from take from everyone and that's how you come up with your own sauce so to speak it is so simple yet so many students are not practicing this way it's not even practice it's, it's a lifestyle it's a habit learning songs and learning songs in this way it's gonna completely, completely transform your playing without having to intellectualize things. Boom. <laughs>